Hi, I'm Bill Ohms. Today we're going to talk about making an eccentric chuck for an ornamental lathe made out of Corian, and this is something that most of you can make in your shop. Uh, warning, this is only for ornamental turning at low RPMs. This is not for high speed. Don't use this on a regular wood lathe at high RPM. Okay, so here's the eccentric chuck. I've got it mounted on a Morse 2 taper, and then there's a portion that can slide back and forth like that. That gives us our off center. And then there's a portion on the top that can rotate. And I've got little detents and index wheels so that that can rotate. So you can go off center and rotate. Those are the key elements of the eccentric chuck. So let me take this apart and show you how we start making it and putting it together. Okay, the fundamental concept of the sliding portion is that I have two pieces of Corian with a piece of T-Track in between and they slide. Now Corian is a wonderful material to work with. If you haven't worked it before, it's uh, easier to work than metal. Uh, you can't tap it with wood screws. You can drill holes and tap it for uh, metal screws. Um, the only disadvantage is it's fairly thin. So when I have a half inch thick, uh, it's not thick enough to put a single T-Track in. So I have to build it up in thickness on both the top and bottom part and put half of the track in the top and half in the bottom. Uh, now when you're putting um, the Corian together, don't depend on CA glue. CA is not the proper glue for Corian. It won't work. Unless you're a licensed Corian dealer, you're not going to get the right kind of glue. So what I did here is I drilled a small piece that uh, put the uh, mounting for my uh, number two Morse taper and uh, put it together with uh, metal screws, tapped the holes all the way through. Uh, and here's the screw that uh, assembles back to the, or uh, secures it back to the Morse taper. Now I like to use a Morse 2 taper. I got these from a little machine shop. They have a soft machinable head. They come drilled with a quarter 20 hole. And I like to make a lot of fixtures where I just put those on and screw them in. The nice thing about the number two Morse taper is you can take it from one lathe to the other without getting a lot of misalignment. So I can take it from my regular lathe to the Rose engine and not have to worry about alignment issues. If you don't have a more staper in your ornamental lathe, you can machine it that way or just use a regular um, uh, collar uh, that does uh, uh, one inch eight TPI for my jet, for example. You can put that on with a little bit bigger piece of Corian. So you can do it that way also. To mill this slot in here, I used a dado saw on a table saw with a fence. The dado blade that I have has shims, so I started narrow and kept adding shims until I had just a, a very nice fit. There's probably about a thousandth of an inch slop in there. I could spread that T-track apart a little bit uh, to get a much more snug fit if I want. Once you get it together, make uh, little marks on how it goes together. Uh, and you'll want to sand this flush. This is very important because later on, that's going to be how you measure with the dial calipers. Uh, when it's offset, you slide that and then you can measure how far off center you are. So your zero reference point is when this is just perfectly flush. So you, it's important to start out with that sanded smooth and flush. Now the uh, T-track, just drill a couple of holes, use some metal screws, drill the holes through, tap it, drill it all the way through, and um, that's pretty much it for getting that slide part made. On this part, I uh, drill holes, countersink them, use metal screws, tap the holes, um, put Loctite on them so they don't come loose. I did dribble CA glue in between there, but again, don't rely on the CA glue for your um, strength on gluing Corian. It's not the right adhesive for that. Now we use um, T-Track bolts and on the back side one of these the quarter 20 thumb nut and slide our track on. I put a little adhesive backed ruler on there. Um, in truth I don't use it much. I mostly use the uh, dial caliper as I showed you before. I'm going to make sure this is very even. Your fingers are surprisingly good at telling if that's even or not. Snug those things down. And now until we have this thing constructed, the construction done, I'm not going to loosen those. Now, next thing is let's get a hole in the middle. 
you can mount this on a metal lathe or on your wood lathe if you're careful and uh, put a hole in here. Again, don't turn this at a very fast RPM. Right now it's balanced, uh, but you don't want to be turning this very fast. Get that hole with sides nice and straight. And then I cut a disc out of the Corian that just fits tight. I uh, drill a hole in the middle here. This is an inch and an eighth hole and I use expansion jaws and I turn this down on the lathe until it just fits snug. You want a very snug tight fit in here. You don't want a lot of slop here. The thing that holds this in is these washers. With Forstner bit, I drilled one inch holes just down about a sixteenth of an inch so that those washers fit in there and that will hold this disc of Corian in place once we get that in with those little, uh, little thumb nuts that we have. Okay, now at this point I'm going to choose my zero rotation, put these things in here, clamp it down tight, and now I need to true up that hole in the middle. I started with an inch and an eighth hole. I'm going to enlarge it just a little bit to make sure that's perfectly true. And that's important at this point. You want that to be right dead on center. So again, I take it to the lathe and carefully um, make sure that that's perfectly round as it's rotating. Then I'm going to put a mark on here. I scribe it in, put some magic marker on, take some acetone, wash it off. So I'm left with a nice black mark. Then I drill a hole in from the side that goes in about that far and have an eighth inch pin. That's my locking point. That's my zero reference. So I can always come back to the zero reference. Okay. Now next step is to drill the rest of the holes for indexing. Now I've got a uh, rotary chuck on my milling machine. So I mounted this and just drilled those holes all the way around. Uh, you can do it on a regular lathe. Um, uh, clamp your drill down. Uh, use regular indexing. Most lathes have a 24 hole indexing and drill those little holes. Now those holes are not round holes. This first one is a round hole the peg can fit in. These are not because if I don't get that perfectly level then it's going to make that disc go up or down. I don't want that. So these are a tapered hole. I use a centering drill. They're short stubby drill bits uh, common on um, drilling a centering hole in uh, metal lays and I just go in enough. They're tapered and then I taper the end of this pin so that as I'm going in it can find the right location enough for me to clamp it down and, but it doesn't go in all the way like it does hole number zero. Okay, so we drill those holes all the way around. The other thing I put in here is two deep holes for set screws. You can see the set screw poking in on that other side there. The set screws are so that I can put the center post in and lock that in. I've off centered that a little bit, so I'm not going to get that confused with indexing holes. So I turn a piece that mounts in the middle of that. Uh, I've done it out of aluminum. Uh, if you don't have a metal lathe, just do it out of black plastic. You can put that in um, and I make it so it doesn't quite bottom out. I want this to bottom out on the shoulder because that's my most accurate point. So I put the set screws in there, snug those down. And on the end of that center post, I put a quarter 20 hole. Now I can mount a piece of scrap wood and this is scrap that I'll um, use until it wears down then put another piece on. I like to use hot melt glue for mounting things on here. So I can take a disc, put it on hot melt glue, cut it off. When that piece wears out, uh, I throw it away and start with another piece on there. And then we can put the, everything back together again. And that's, then let's mount a piece and take it over to the lathe and show you how it works.